convolutional neural networks are a common strategy for image classification. Now, here is the example of a two that you can see how these are connected to the lower layers. Here's a down sampling or pooling. And then you can see another layer. There's another down, sa down sampling or, or pooling. And then there's a flattening layer, another flat layer. And then finally, we've predicted the two. And so for each layer, here's our input layer, convolution layer one. There's the down sampling layer, convolution layer two, another down sample, fully connected layer, and another fully connected layer, and then our output. Okay, so what we want to do is in Python, we're going to train a convolutional neural network to distinguish between images, in this case, of bits. So here we have a certain type of bit. Those are PDC bits. We have roller cone bits. And then finally we have spoon bits. And these are commonly used in horizontal directional drilling, for example, drilling under roads or uh, you know just surface type drilling. All right, and then in the next example, we're going to distinguish in photos between cracks and no cracks in concrete. Okay, but that'll be the second example. So first, we're going to try this uh, first example here with the bits, and then we'll modify that to show how you can have other input images. All right, so the very first thing that we're going to do in here is go ahead and just import some packages. Uh, we're going to need uh, to get the images, and we'll download those with a URL lib a request. We'll need OpenCV. Okay, now if you don't have this, go ahead and just pip install OpenCV-Python. All right, and then we'll, we're going to use regular expressions. NumPy, a random number generator, matplotlib to view the images, and then we're going to do TensorFlow as well. So if you don't have TensorFlow, just go ahead and TensorFlow, pip install TensorFlow, and it'll get the latest version for you. All right. Um, we also need some pre processing. Okay, this one is an image data generator and I'll show you how nice it is that we could use these these uh, standard packages to flow from a directory into our input data and the directory is going to be the label the directory name is going to be the label so uh, we're going to use a sequential model and we'll use dense activation and flatten layers and then we'll also have uh, convolution two dimension and max pooling 2d I'll explain a little bit about how those work as well Okay, so those are all the packages that we need. Let's go ahead and just run this and import those. All right, now what we want to do is just download. You can select this link here to download. Um, okay, and I'll go ahead and just open the file. You'll see in here we have these directories of uh, images. And these are set up in two different folders, test and train folder. And I'll show you how we're going to import those and use those. Okay, so you don't need to necessarily download that and extract it right now, but we're going to do that with a Python script to download bitphotos.zip and we'll get it. Uh, there's our file name, there's the URL, and then we put the file name at the end of it. And we're going to do a urlib request to retrieve that file. And then once it's on our computer, we need to extract the archive and we'll also remove bitphotos.zip. So we'll open it up with zip.zip file. We'll read the file in read mode and we'll name that object as zip ref. Then we're gonna go ahead and extract all. We'll extract it to the current directory. All right, and then finally we'll remove that file. So we extracted the zipped archive to the current directory and then removed the file bitphotos.zip. 
Okay, let's go ahead and just run this so we can see, um, you know, where it's located these. Okay, it only took about a second. And let's come in here to bits. And now we have this test and we have the train folder. Okay, so if I remove these two and then run it again, then you'll see that appear one more time. So let me go ahead and just, um, oh, I need to come over here and just run it one more time. And you'll see that it uh, put those back in there. Okay, so extracted these two. These are gonna be our images that we're gonna use. Just pay attention to this folder structure because that'll help us with labeling the data. So there's our spoon bits for training. There's our roller cone bits for training and there's our PDC bits for training. Okay, and after we have the files now, um, you know, we have these uh, test folder and train folder with these subdirectories. So this is our this is our tree structure of the folders. And we're going to import the photos into Python. Now, the first step of this is to make the data readable to the model and then um, and also provide more, uh, you know, so training material for the model to learn. So we need to have this train processor be able to import the pixels, but also give each photo a label. Uh, we're also going to do things like flip horizontally, rotate, shift it, make sure that the model learns from the shape of the bit rather than the orientation or size. So for example, if a bit is always um, stacked horizontally versus vertically, you know, we wouldn't want to learn from that how it's stacked, we'd want to learn from the shape of the bit. So we're going to do some rotations and other things with the images. Okay, so data processing. We're going to have a train processor and we'll have an image data generator. And we'll rescale all of the pixels to um, between zero, they're all between zero and 255. In general, machine learning works better if you have all of your data scaled to between zero and one. So that's why we rescale it here. We're gonna flip horizontally. Uh, we can we have a zoom range. Uh, we're gonna have a rotation range as well. So this is how much it's gonna be able to rotate and also zoom. And then we have a shear range as well. Okay, and a height shift range and a width shift range as well. So all of these help to uh, adjust each of the images so we're not training on original orientation. Okay, so there's our test processor as well. We're gonna do another image data generator. We'll rescale that as well. Okay, so that's all we needed on the train uh, processor. Okay, so now we're gonna load the data. This is our train processor. And we're gonna flow from directory. So this is one of the very nice things about image classification with Keras and TensorFlow is that we could just give it a, a data structure, a, a directory structure, and then it's going to label the data automatically for us. So we're gonna use the train folder like we imported, and then our target size is 256 by 256. So let's just go into that folder and just look at some of the images that we have Okay, and if I look at properties and then details, I can see that the dimensions of each of these are all just a little bit different. Okay, so all of them have different pixels. So it's gonna rescale them to 256 by 256 uh, for each of them. So let's just look at this one as well. So they're all fairly small. And so we're actually gonna be upscaling a little bit um, but just so they're all consistent at 256 by 256. All right, so let's come back here. Um, there's our batch size for training. Um, we only want to have you know 32 per. Okay, and then we have class mode is categorical, and we'll shuffle. So there's no necessarily order to them. And then we'll have our test, and this is going to be flow from directory and we're gonna have the same options there. 
Okay, so there's our train and test how we've imported the data. All right, now what we want to do is come to model building. Now that we've imported the data, we want to build the convolutional neural network uh, with a certain number of convolutional net layers, fully connected dense layers, and the number of nodes of each layer. Okay, so I'm going to explain this as we go through it. We're going to choose some model parameters. Number of convolutional layers is two. Number of dense layers is one. And the layer size, this is like how many, uh, we started with 256 by 256. We're going to just uh, translate that up to like a 64 by 64. And then we're going to reduce that down. All right. And then the number of training epics is uh, 20. This is the number of like major iterations that we go through to update the parameters. All right. Now let's go ahead and just uh, build the model. We'll initiate the model variable. This is going to be a sequential model. And we'll begin adding properties to the model variable. Okay, so we need to add a convolutional layer. This is going to be our input layer. And we're going to do a 2D uh, convolutional layer, layer size. Okay, so this is our uh, convolutional uh, size here, 3 by 3. We could also just replace that with the number 3 there. Uh, there's our input shape. So we have uh, 256 by 256 pixels. And then the third dimension here is like the RGB. Um, so here we have um, a certain value. This is going to be 0 to 255 for each one um, for the red, green, and blue. All right. And then we're going to add an activation. This is going to be a rectified linear unit. Now, those are... Um, you know, there are different types of, of units that we can use. And I'll just show uh, this over here. We have things like uh, hyperbolic. Okay, so uh, hyperbolic tangent. Uh, we have a sigmoid. Uh, and then a rectified linear unit. Okay, so we're going to use... Uh, ReLU or a rectified linear unit here. Okay, and uh, we're going to add a max pooling 2D. And so we're going to pool that down to 2 by 2. That's going to be our pooling size. And then we're going to add some additional convolutional layers based on the number of convolutional layers. So we already had one right here. And then we'll have for I. So you could have for I in range, or if you just leave the underscore, it's basically saying I'm not concerned about the iterator there. But it's going to be that number of convolutional layers minus one. So these are the additional ones that we need. And if we change this to like you know five convolutional layers, and it's just going to take longer. There's going to be many more parameters to train. So we're just going to add these same things, okay? And our activation function, another relu. You could change that for each layer if you wanted to. And there's our reduction uh, layer. Okay, so now we're going to flatten um, this. Like we saw in this uh, in that prior one where you just have a line of, of uh, nodes. So you're flattening it, and then we're going to add a fully connected dense layer. Okay, these are the number of uh, dense layers that we have right here. And that's going to be a rectified linear unit as well. And then we'll add the output layer. Now, this one has to be three right here because there are going to be three options. It's going to be a PDC, a roller cone, or a spoon bit. Okay, and we'll use a softmax for that activation function to turn our continuous values into a discrete value. And now let's go ahead and compile the model. And we'll use our loss function is going to be categorical cross entropy. Our optimizer will be the atom optimizer. That's a good default optimizer to use. And then the met metrics will be accuracy. All right. Now we're going to use the already loaded data to train and or tune the model, basically to adjust the parameters of the model. And so we'll fit with our training data. And these are the number of major iterations that we're going to go through. And there's our validation data. This is going to be in the test, uh, this test set. And that'll be helpful because as it's iterating, we'll see how it's doing on the validation. 
So we don't need to wait until the end. We can see how it's doing on the training, but also on the validation or test set. And then we'll save the trained model as bits.h5. So that's uh, if we want to stop there and then open up another script, import that, and then start from that model. That's our saved model that we could deploy somewhere. Okay, so let's run this one. That was a lot of model building, uh, but let's just see how this does. So there's our first one. Now at the end, you can see the value loss and also the value accuracy. So that one's probably the most important one. We only had a 33% accuracy. Basically, it means we were just guessing. Okay, so we can see the accuracy uh, going up a little bit. Now the value accuracy, the validation accuracy is not very high right here. So we may need to go back in and make some adjustments if it doesn't raise it. So you can see now it's it was coming back up a little bit. Uh, 0 0.466, 0 0.4. Okay, that actually did uh, pretty poorly. <laughs> so you can see this uh, this number right here. It was 0.33. I mean, that's like if you had a multiple choice test and you just were guessing, like let's say PDC for all of them, you'd get a 33%. Um, so not very good, but on the training, it had a 91%. So we need to go back in and maybe adjust something with this. Let's go ahead and uh, you know come back in here to our, you know, we can adjust the layer size, for example. If we want to go up just a little bit higher, um, you know, we could go to 128. Okay, so let's just try that and see if we can get a little bit more accuracy. I think the major problem here, though, is not the layer size. It's just the number of images that we have. So we only are using about 15 images for each one to train. And, um, you know, so that's really not enough for these neural networks, especially with how many parameters that you see there, um, to really be able to create something that's generalized, uh, a fit that's more generalized instead of just specific to those few images that are there. So um, you, you can change this around a little bit and see if you can get better uh, validation accuracy. But let's just go on, assuming that we had more photos, and that would lead us to you know, a higher accuracy. So um, here it made it through 10. We'll just see how this one does with this you know, larger model. Um, the other thing to look at is just how much storage this is going to take. So this H5 file, if we look at it, that's already 180 megabytes just to store all of the parameters of that neural network and the structure of the neural network. So that's a compressed file that we could then read back in. So that's fairly large. And, and you're going to see that with this one, when I doubled uh, the from 64 to 128, we're going to see a big increase in this uh, H5 file as well. So let's just come back here to it's almost done training. Okay, and that, that's going to be an issue if you want to deploy this somewhere um, and you have to, you know, look that up that, you know, it's going to take a while to look up those values to load this and then look it up. So you can see that went up to about three quarters of a gigabyte there just by changing that one parameter. Okay, so definitely something to consider. Um, we're going to uh, just... Again, you know, this validation accuracy, we want to see that get a little bit higher. Um, but again, we don't have enough images here to really make that much higher. So let's go ahead and just test this now. Um, I have my different bit types, PDC, roller cone, and spoon. Those are all my possible output values. And then I'm going to make a prediction based on this train model. So I'll have an image and I'll read that image into uh, CV2 or OpenCV. So there's our loading of the image, and then I want to show it. Okay, so I just want to show the image 
just so I can see what it is when I make the prediction. All right, and then I'll uh, do image dot load image. Okay, and there's our target size, uh, 256 by 256. And now we're going to now instead of just displaying it to the screen, we want to put it into a form that we can test with. All right, now we want to do image to array, and then we have our image array. We're going to scale it. Uh, to you know divide by 255 to get it between 0 and 1 and then we're going to expand the dimensions um, with axis 0 okay and now we have our predicted value which is going to be our model dot predict and then IMG batch okay so that's how it's inputting it into the model and we're going to use the argmax as well and then our true value okay so I'm gonna get this from the directory where it's or the file name okay so I'm gonna search for either PDC in the name roller cone in the name or spoon in the name and uh, okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna look for that okay for the image file path and uh, then I'm going to output what is the predicted value what is the true value and then whether it's correct or not. Okay, I'll return the output. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run this. This is our function that we're gonna use, and then we're gonna call that. So I wanna randomly select one of the types. So here are all of my test values over here on the right. Um, let's go just randomly select something between one and a three in in Python we're going to do that between zero and two okay so J is going to be random between one and five that's just the way the files are are named okay and I'm going to just grab that bit type so uh, this first one I if it's zero is going to be PDC if it's two if it's one it's going to be roller cone if it's two it's going to be spoon okay now I'm going to get my uh, file name based on this okay so I'm going to replace uh, these things with underscores um, and for the bit type and then convert to lowercase add another underscore and then add this string one through five and then I'll add the JPEG at the end okay so there's my uh, file name and then my test image file path is going to be in the test directory plus the B, this is going to be my folder name, plus, and then the image name. And then I'm going to make a prediction. So it's going to put that file, that file path to the image into this function, and then it will make a prediction based on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run this. Okay, so it correctly predicted true for roller cone. Um, Here's another roller cone, predicted that one correctly. Here's it said that it predicted it was a PDC, but it was actually a roller cone. So that was not correct. It corrected the predicted spoon bit, PDC. Okay, so this is not doing too poorly. Okay, actually it is. <laughs> I see it quite a few falses now. Um, so it's making a, a couple lucky guesses, but um, you know, overall the accuracy is not very good and you would need you know many more images in order to be able to train this uh, properly okay so let's go on to our next example now and the next one is going to be one where we're going to uh, use cracks in concrete and what I wanted to do is show you how you can modify this script to be able to, you know, if you have some new images that you'd like to test, you can uh, basically take any image set, put them in folders, and then modify this script to do the classification on your, for your own uh, application. Okay, so I'm just going to come to the Machine Learning for Engineers course website, and let's just take a look at some of this data uh, if you come down here to 
Okay, bit classification. That's These are the modules that we're working through. You, here's the notebook that we just ran. Uh, we also have that in Google Colab if you'd like to just run it not in your own on your own computer but through a web interface and uh, there are the photos that we just went through and also the source that we covered all right and then this is our exercise right here we want to replace the photos in the bit classification case study to be able to classifier to distinguish photos of of concrete with a crack or with no crack so that'd be negative and if we download this, okay, we're going to see that, um, I'll just go ahead and extract all. So this one has a few more images. It's a, about 1,200 images of concrete. You know, some of them have cracks, some of them don't. So as we think about that, you know, let's just look at these uh images right here you can quickly distinguish between cracks and no cracks okay so if you were given this you could say there's a crack there's no crack there's a crack there's no crack and you would take pictures and label these so put them into these different folders whether it's positive or negative for a crack now there's some like this that is, this is going to be negative but you know for the computer vision that might look like a crack okay just a deformity in the concrete or um, okay so here is a crack so you could go through individually and generate the data for the training but um, you know what we want to do is develop a classifier so it can look at an image and determine if there's a crack or not so for example let's say a drone is flying on the front face of a concrete dam it would be able to take many photos and be able to determine where there are cracks. And it could do that over and over again. Once you've trained the classifier, it would be able to detect these uh, these problems with a concrete structure. Okay, so let's go in and just and modify that. We've got these test images, if positive or negative. Um, and let's just go ahead and look at some of those. We've got the train and test. And so here's the negative, you know, no cracks in here. And then the positive, these all have cracks. And these are all, let's just look at the properties of this. Um, these are all 227 by 227 pixels. All right, um, so fairly small photos of each one. They've been scaled down already. So this archive, uh, you know, if you go get the original one, it's going to be uh, about 20 times larger than this, uh, or actually maybe 40 times larger. It's going to be 40,000 photos. I've reduced this down to about 1,200. Okay, 1,000 for training and 200 for the testing. All right, so let's go ahead and modify this now. And... So this was our bit uh, one, all right? And what we wanna do now is go ahead and just change this. Uh, you know, we have different photos and uh, we want to go in and, let me go ahead and delete these two because just gonna add it to those. Okay, so delete those first so that when we get the new ones, uh, it's not going to uh, put those on top of it. Okay, so let's see. The very first thing that we're going to need to do is just change this one. We're going to change instead of bit photos, we are going to change this to uh, concrete cracks. All right, and that's going to retrieve the new images. It downloaded those 10 megabytes. Let's just look at those. And it extracted them here. Here's our negative, and there's our positive. Okay, so it did that automatically into your run directory. All right, let's go down. Uh, this is obviously going to change. I'm not going to change the comments here. Um, but let's go ahead and just scale 
our data. I think this looks about the same as before. Okay, so it found a thousand images that belong to two classes, and it found 200 images belong to two classes for the testing. All right, let's go ahead and build our model now. Now, this one, uh, we may not need such a big layer size. Let's go ahead and reduce this down. I'm going to set that to 16. Okay, and then we can go down or up. If we go down, it's going to make that model file smaller. Uh, if we go up, it might improve the accuracy. Okay, and let's um, go ahead and just leave this except for the input shape. Okay, the input shape, those are 227 uh, by 227. And let's see if we had any other, oh, I need to change these, the target sizes here. Okay, 227, 227. So I won't have to scale these at all. Okay, so there I have, um, let me go ahead and load this again. Okay, with target size 227. All right, and then I'm going to come down here. There's my input shape. I'll leave all of this alone. I just need to change this on my output because I only have two things, uh, uh, positive or negative. All right, and then everything else can stay the same. I'm going to change this bit to maybe cracks. Okay, cracks.h5. And let's go ahead and just run this now. <coughs> Okay, so I've changed the input shape and the output shape, and uh, also the layer size as well. Let's see how this is training. This one's going to take just a little bit longer to train. You know, I've got these thousand images, and um, you know, if I look at my loading here, I do have a, a GPU in here, but it looks like I haven't compiled it for the GPU. Um, it's just running off of the CPU right now. So, um, you know, if you also run on the web, you know, with Google Colab, you can request a GPU kernel and it'll run it on a GPU. Okay, but I'm just running this locally right here. It's going to take it just a little bit to get through all these. And one of the things you can do is also terminate just a little bit early. Um, if you see that it's made it uh, far enough along. So I'm going to just go ahead and interrupt this. Okay. Interrupt that. <clears throat> and let me just change this um, number of training. I'll just change that to five instead. Okay. So I don't want to necessarily go so long with 20. I can maybe go with five and just let's just see how much accuracy we have with five. Now, a 0 0.5 means it's just guessing. You know, it's no better than just saying positive for all of them. All right, and we have the validation loss and the validation accuracy. So you can see it's not giving much predictive capability here. Um, we want to see this accuracy value go up. Okay, again, didn't make much progress there. Let's see how well it's going to do. It's actually the accuracy went down. It's doing worse than than guessing. You can see the loss function is going down though. So that's how well it's um, okay. Uh, okay, this is starting to go up just a little bit higher, not much. Okay, it looks like we're going to need to go for more iterations and that more epics. Um, so not very good right now, but let's just keep going down. Uh, we'll work on some of the later code while this is going to be running. Okay, so I'm going to change this. <clears throat> okay, so let's go with uh, maybe 10 there, or we could go with uh, 20. I just don't want to make this go too long. Okay, we'll go 15, kind of in between. All right, so let's go down, and uh, so the model is going to be saved as an H5 file. And what we can do is just import that now. We could actually start a new script and load that back in. Um, 
and the code on the website will show you how to do that but let's just assume we still have it and we're just going to now uh, use our test data okay so if we wanted to load it back in we would do something like model equals and then Keras dot models dot load model and then it would be cracks dot h5 okay so if you didn't want to have to train and test in the same script you could load it back in all right now our our uh, type we only have two and that's going to be either negative or uh, positive okay those are all the possible output values and then we just need to have our target size be 227 and 227 all right and then uh, we want to scale the image okay just like we had before to scale the bits all right and then um, let's go ahead and okay this is all correct all right this one we need to change that to positive or negative that's how our uh, structure of our folder is okay and then we have our predicted and true predicted type and true type and we'll see if that is correct so let's just have this go and then um, now I'm going to select uh, randomly between zero, uh, 1 and 2. Okay, and then the image number, I have, um, uh, let's see, uh, the number of those, I selected kind of from the end of these, you know, 20,000 per set for the test. So that's going to be uh, 19,901 up to 20,000. Okay, so that's going to be the image number. And then I'm going to keep this one the same. And then my the name of my image is much simpler than this. It's just going to be a string uh, plus JPEG. Okay, so it's just numbered, number dot JPEG. All right, and then this is, the rest of that is the same. All right, so we've just adapted this to a new going from this roller cone PDC spoon bit classification over to concrete classification just with a few minor changes here let's just see how this is doing uh, and it looks like the accuracy is much more now um, the validation accuracy is also 95 percent so it looks like this one um, you know it took a few to get there but you can see it's just the accuracy increased quite a bit here. It was able to learn uh, on the training set. And then this is our validation on the test set. Okay, so let's come on down. There's our validation accuracy, 98% accurate. So that is a very high accuracy. We just needed a few more iterations here to uh, train our model. Um, and there's a little bit of initialization, just random uh, selection of those parameters and how the images were rotated and things like that. So a bit of randomness that occurred just with the training. It was able to get this. So let's run this a number of times now. Um, so that one is correct. We should expect about a 98% accuracy, okay, for detecting these cracks. So that one looks like I'm getting all trues let's go until we get a, a correct as false so it predicted that there were cracks here but the true was negative and so you can see some of these deformities um, you know it's not a crack but it looked like a crack okay and we can go on just uh, continuing to run this just sampling randomly from that test set Okay, but it would be interesting to go through and just look at the ones that, you know, and, and some of them may have been misclassified, for example. Um, so some of that error might be from, you know, just the you put those photos in the wrong folder. Um, so that could that could potentially be the case as well. 
Okay, so we've gone through this exercise again, PDC, roller cone spoon, the bit classification, and then concrete uh, cracks versus no crack classification. All of the source code for this is going to be here at this website and uh, also post this video there as well. Here are some references for the concrete data. And also thanks to Peter for generating the bit classification case study. There's his LinkedIn profile.